Hey everyone! So today I am finally doing my very first book review. Now if you're new to my channel or you've really only started watching a couple of my, like my latest uh, videos, I am doing this by popular demand. I did like a Christmas haul and then I did what I want for Christmas list and I had talked about books and the kind of books I like and then I asked my subscribers if they would like to see book reviews and a lot of people said yes please. I did describe in those videos that some of my favorite books of all time are historical romances especially by the author Joanna Lindsay. So I am going to be doing a book review of a, one of her books today but before we get into the book review just want to say that this is not for children so any of my small little ones watching me this is not for you guys Emily Conrad all of you this is not for you unless of course you have your parents permission but with that said I am gonna keep my conversation as PG 13 as I possibly can so not this is not gonna be like a Fifty Shades of Grey review this is going to be as appropriate as it can possibly be. But I am reviewing a historical romance, so that is my warning for anybody that should not be watching this. This is my warning right now. This is my very first book review. Um, I am going to do the I'm going to do the best of my ability to give you the best review that I possibly can. But being that it is my first, I'm sure that the more I keep doing them, the better the content will be, the better the information that I give you guys. So just keep in mind, this is my first book review, and my dog is growling at somebody. Who is it? Who is that? Did you get him? Okay, yeah, bye-bye. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and the very first review I'm obviously going to do is going to be a historical romance by Joanna Lindsay. She is, again, one of my favorite authors of all time, and the book is called Man of My Dreams. Now, one of the things that I don't like about historical romances are the titles, and even some of the, like, cover art, I'm... I can't even show you the cover art because it's just bad. I mean, it's horrible. And one of the models that they get, I think his name is Fabio, like, right? Isn't that his name? He's, like, really famous. He's got, like, the long hair and he's really muscly. I don't know why these authors or publishers or whoever in charge of picking the cover art thinks that, like, that's attractive. It's personally not my taste in what I like want my guy to look like. He's not like beefy. Um, maybe a lot of women prefer that. Maybe they took some sort of poll, but it is not appealing to me whatsoever. This is too much. That's all I'm gonna say. So if you end up buying this book or you know what better yet, I would highly suggest that you go to the library. I love supporting my libraries and you don't have to spend any money on books and more than likely your library will carry Joanna Lindsay. I know mine does. And so go check this book out and if you do, you know how books all have different like covers and stuff. Maybe the one you get will have this cover of this and then you'll see why I didn't show it. But um, that is one of the things that I don't like about historical romances is the like cover art and I don't like some of the titles because it just oh, it just can be a little cheesy man of my dreams isn't too bad but it definitely doesn't match the storyline so most of the time Joanna Lindsay picks a really great title that really matches um, the storyline but man of my dreams is just like I don't know I feel like it's pretty random and yeah, so those are the only two things I don't like about historical romances. It feels kind of silly and sometimes it can feel embarrassing. You know, if you like want to take your book somewhere and you have to sit somewhere like soccer game or wherever and you're kind of like, you got to hide it. You're like, oh my God, does anybody know I'm reading this? Um, I've gotten to a point where I'm actually like very confident in the choices I make in my life and so I'm not embarrassed by it anymore, but I used to be a lot, so I totally understand if you feel the same way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the book and talk about first what is a historical romance. Um, what I think it is is where a romance is set in 
an earlier time in the world. So a lot of these historical romances range anywhere between like the 1500s to the late 1800s. So right before the 1900s started, that's what I think historical romances are. And back in those days, you had a lot of pre-arranged marriages and especially in England where most of these stories are written from Joanna Lindsay, um, she does describe what I think is just a lot of factual information where she describes London and some of the streets that really did exist back in those days and some streets that still exist till this day. And so she does a really great job of describing London and the little country towns that used to surround London before they were built up. And back then, they, you know, there was definitely the monarchy and you had, you know, all of the titles. And if you were a maid or a servant, you know, there was a certain way that you um, projected yourself, the things that you could and couldn't do to the people with a higher title. And so titles were everything back then. And you had like the king, the queen, you have, and then you have everybody underneath, the princes and princesses, and then you had dukes, duchess, counts, viscounts, and all of those people, and they do go in order. And so she does a really great job of describing that in her novels. Now in this particular book we are dealing with a duke. So the duke is the highest in the land underneath the king and the prince. So anybody in the royal family the duke is strictly right underneath. So they are extremely wealthy and they are extremely, um, there's not that many of them and they're always sought after. And of course, in her novels, she always describes everybody to be incredibly handsome and beautiful, which is exactly what this is book kind of about. A lot of book reviews talk about, spoiler alert, am I gonna tell you how the ending goes? Am I not gonna tell you? I'm not sure how this book review is going to go, um, especially dealing with historical romance, because I don't wanna say they all end up the same, but there's really not much to hide. I'm, not, I'm definitely not gonna tell you the last chapter of the book, but it's not like some of the bigger books like Twilight and, you know, like fantasies and, you know, books that you're like, oh my God, what is gonna happen? Like. These books aren't really like that. It's just all about a love and how the love unfolds, which is another reason why I love these books. I can put this book up for like two and three months and come back and reread it again. And that's what I love about this is I can just keep coming back, keep reading the love story, and it just feels good. It feels good to, you know, be involved in their lives and in their character. And every time I put the book down, I find myself going, something doesn't feel right. Like, what is it? And I'm like, oh, that's because I'm missing part of this world and I want to go back and, you know, keep reading my book. So I don't know if that makes any sense. I don't know if anybody does that and they'll start reading a book and then you realize, oh my God, I'm like, I've put this other world on pause and I need to go resume it so that they can keep, you know, unfolding their tale and stuff. I don't know if that makes any sense whatsoever. First book review. So this book is about a very beautiful girl. She's supposed to be the most desirable beauty in the land and she's wildly unpredictable. Her name is Megan Penworthy. And she is not, she doesn't have a title. Her father is, um, I don't even know what her father is, but they have some money. I don't know how they have money, so that's the only part that confused me about this, is she doesn't have a title. And so if you don't have a title, you kind of wonder how you make your money. But another thing about historical romances, especially the way that she writes, is when you become of certain age, and this is like, this really goes in with the same kind of storyline as Pride and Prejudice. Okay, so it's the same kind of story because back then in London and that, you know, part of the country, um, you became a certain age and you had to be married and quickly before you were basically put on the shelf. And if you reached like 22 years old, you were too old and you basically became a sinister, spinster, spinster, not a sinister, a spinster. So like in Pride and Prejudice, Elizabeth Darcy's best friend, um, God, I love that movie. I'm forgetting what her name is, but her friend basically 
gets engaged to that horrible guy who wants to get engaged to Elizabeth, that short little guy, and she's like, how can you be engaged to him? And her friend's like, I don't have a choice. Like, I'm old now, 22, 23. She's like, my parents are already tired with me, and, you know, I have to be married. Like, what else am I supposed to do? And that's really how times used to be back then. And so what people would do is they, would call it, they called it the season. Like, in London, they called it the season. And that was the chance where a bunch of people threw parties, and you went if you were of, mar of marriage age, and you would try to find your guy at the balls. Yeah, you would go show up to the balls and you'd be in your gowns and all your stuff. And there were even rules to that. Like if you weren't married, you couldn't wear dark colors. So if you were married, you could wear navies and like burgundies. But if you were not married, it was a no-no to wear dark colors. You had to wear pastels and anything light and babyish basically. So lots of rules, which I love. It's very intriguing. I love all of that stuff. And they always make it seem so fabulous, but I'm sure really in reality, it probably was a nightmare, you know? But so Megan is determined to have a season and she's incredibly beautiful. And the one person in this book that throws the best balls, her name is Lady Ophelia and she is a countess. And a countess is directly under a duke. So this lady has a very high title and all Megan wants to do is be invited to one of her balls. So they show up to this church, the Lady Ophelia is there and she looks at the best friend and the best friend's fiance and invites them to one of her balls and then does not invite Megan right in front of her. And that sets the whole tone for the book. And she cries, she she flees, she doesn't go to church, her friend and fiance go after her and her friend says, you know, I think the reason why you're not being invited is because you're just beautiful and this lady has three daughters that she has to marry off and no one's going to want to marry her daughters if you come to her ball. All the men are gonna want to be with you. And so at that point, Megan vows that the way she's gonna get back at Lady Ophelia, the Countess, is by getting a title higher than hers, which means Megan has to marry a Duke. And that is how the story unfolds, and I absolutely love this. Now, Megan is really described as a very sweet character, but she does have a guard up because of the way she looks, and she thinks people just treat her horribly because of it. Then this happens. In the meantime, she is plotting to marry a duke, and not any duke, but one specific duke in mind, and she's never seen him, but he's like the highest of the highest, and his name is uh, Ambrose St. James, Duke of Rothstein. She's never met him, but has every intention of marrying him, and no other suitor will satisfy her, especially not the common, if uncommonly handsome, horse breeder Devlin Jeffries. In the meantime, a horse breeder shows up to her father's house where she lives with her father and it tells you immediately that this horse breeder is none other posing as a horse breeder, but he is the Duke himself. He is Ambrose St. James, Duke of Rothstein. Well, he is in hiding from a spat with his best friend. I'm not going to get into the whole thing so that you have something to read, but he goes into hiding. He goes to her father and says, can I stay here? And then lo and behold, he has fallen smack dab in love with Megan as any other man would until he finds out that she is determined to marry the Duke. And he's like, oh really, you are? And the whole time she doesn't know it's him. This is a great book, and I have flagged some of the pages just to kind of sh share some of the sections on why I love this writing so much. One of the pages I flagged, I'm going to read a little bit of it to you, and it's him, it's his reaction to her, and it, it says, Who would have thought two dimples could be such disarming weapons? He was bemused his thoughts gone adrift, his tongue tied in knots. He felt as if he'd been kicked on the arse. 
She also uses a lot of terms from histor historical romances and especially from like England and British terms. That girl ought to have freckles, he thought in pure disgruntlement. Why the devil didn't she? There ought to be something to counteract a smile like that which made a man want to wrap his arms around her and protect her for the rest of his days. I love stuff like that. Like, I don't just love, you know, the attraction part of it, but I love reading about, from a man's point of view, really it means written by a woman, but that's why it's so amazing. But from a man's point of view on how he sees a woman and I love reading that it's just so beautiful so she is just hell-bent on you know marrying this duke but in the meantime in the back of her mind she's like oh my god what would my life be if I just married a horse breeder the other part one of the other pages that I flagged is to also talk about how funny I think that that the, these books can be. I don't know why, but when you start reading, there's a lot of parts that are just funny, especially to me. And it takes a lot to make me laugh personally. But, and you may not find this funny as I'm reading this to you, but when you get into the book and you get to know the characters, you may find it funny. But she does put in a lot of amazing humor, which I adore about her. And this is the point in the book, see, it's very early on. Like, a lot happens, it's, flies by. It's not a book that builds and builds and then you have like a climax. It is filled with so much good stuff and I mean it's just easy to read these books in one day. And so this is the setting where he finds out she makes the statement like I'm not gonna marry your horse breeder. I'm marrying a duke and he's like there's only one duke right now and it's sort of me. So he's like oh really? And she's like yeah I'm gonna marry Ambrose St. James. And then he immerses himself into physical labor and he's, cause he's living in the barn. He comes as a horse breeder and he's living in the barn. And so he's pitching all this hay and he's really angry about it. And he, it says he had begun the labor in an effort to keep from smashing his fist through a wall, which was what he had the urge to do after his last encounter with Megan Penworthy and her most startling revelations. Pitching hay, however, did not take his mind off the encounter as he assumed it would. Just the opposite. The exertion seemed to fuel his anger with every pitch. So she was gonna marry him, was she? Over his dead body. The nerve of that girl. The bloody audacity to set her sights on him before she'd even met him. So it was incredibly funny when I read that and I had to flag it so that you would know that not only is there like an amazing tale of like the relationship, the chemistries, it's also really funny. Now, not that this is a secret, but one of my favorite ways that she writes her characters. And let me tell you, every book is a different character. It's a different story. And the reason why this is my first book review, because this is like one of my favorites. There are many different books where the characters really don't profess their love until the very end. And sometimes I don't really like that. I want there to be love at the very beginning and I wanna see how it like all plays out. And yes, you know, the majority of them, if not all of them end up to, yeah, they all do. They all end, end up together in the end, but I love reading the types of stories that she picks out for each character. One of the things that I'm gonna to try to keep PG-13 is another portion of the book that Joanna Lindsay writes about, and it's, you know, the interaction between the man and the woman in these books, and she does write those parts in here. Some books, you know, has it more than others. It really depends on the two characters and how she writes them, but she does write it very well. Um, I don't feel like it's distasteful. Um, I personally, like if I could compare it to Fifty Shades of Grey, um, I actually personally had to stop reading those books. It was not my taste. I did not like them whatsoever. It actually upset me. I was just like appalled. But I have tons of friends who loved Fifty Shades of Grey and you know we all have our different like taste values and the things that gets us excited um so in comparing this to 50 shades of gray this is very very tame but anything compared to 50 shades is going to be very tame right so 
This is a horrible comparison, but she does write scenes in here, and again, it depends on the characters, but I feel like she writes it very well, and some of them are a little bit different than others. Um, there are some that just are a little bit more on the aggressive side, and there are some that are, I really don't know how to describe it, but some that are just softer and, I don't know, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, uh, and that is also part of the historical romance. So if you did those things before marriage, you were basically ruined. So if you didn't marry that man, then you were ruined because your next husband was gonna find out that you had been compromised. What ends up happening is you're just gonna have to read this book because it's a very, very good and that is the only part I don't wanna spoil about this book. And if you do want me to do reviews where I kind of give an entire overview and you don't mind to have a little bit of spoilers here and there, let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and do this first book review and not tell you what happens between Megan and Ambrose St. James, but it's fantastic. It's incredibly charming, and this is one of my favorite Joanna Lindsay novels of all time. So that is my first book review. I hope I did a really good job. I'm wondering if I gave too much, if I gave too little. So being that this is my first book review, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know the kind of stuff you want to hear in book reviews and I'll apply it to my very next one. Now, not all of my book reviews are going to be historical romances. I do love anything fantasy related, like sci-fi fantasy stuff that like just would not happen in real life, like Twilight and um, you know Hunger Games, all that kind of stuff. I love all of those books. I am going to be reading The Rose Society, which is the second book from Young Elites, and I've already read Young Elites. Um, I'm not sure if it's book review uh, worthy for my channel just yet, but um, I do like to read books like this as well. I will say that I hauled this book and I showed this to you guys. This is kind of what set the whole thing off. I hauled this book and I said I was going to put this in my stocking because you know nothing else would end up in it unless I put stuff in it. And I, this is not Joanna Lindsay. Usually I don't stray from her because otherwise I'm disappointed and I'm kind of right. Although some of my subscribers had mentioned two other authors that wrote similar to Joanna Lindsay. I may have forgotten who those authors were, so if that was you and you left that comment, comment below again and tell me which authors are similar to her. But I did read like the first chapter of this and it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle, and I don't know if it's because I like her style of writing, but this is called Married to a Perfect Stranger. <sighs> Maybe I need to give it a chance, but honestly, past that first chapter, I was just like, oh my god, I'm bored to tears. I'm sure that after I edit this, I'm going to think to myself, oh, I should have said this, and I should have said that. So... I'm going to be writing notes as I'm editing, as I'm reading your comments, and hopefully my second book review is going to be even better than this one. And if there are any books that you want me to read and do a book review on, comment those down below. Leave me your suggestions on what you want to see, what kind of book, and you know, let me know the, obviously the title and the author or the style of writing, but I will tell you that I am not into anything gory, anything depressing. Like I used to read V.C. Andrews when I was a kid and those books are hardcore depressing. Like I would have to stop reading those books because I used to be in such a bad mood and didn't know why and it was because and they're addicting, like you just want to keep reading because they are written so intriguing and interesting, but then you like, you leave feeling horrible. And it's like, V.C. Andrews wrote stuff like Flowers in the Attic and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, so I don't read those kinds of books. Please do not ask me to read V.C. Andrews, um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. If I'm gonna read something, I wanna feel good. 
I want to feel like I'm in a world that I want to live in. And that those are the kinds of books I seek out because I, in my head, I make myself the star character, the star girl. I'm like, that's me. I'm her. Mm -hmm, that's right. I'm a Mary a Duke. So that's just how I am. And I hope that you guys liked this book review. I'm so excited to do this. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave me all your comments down below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.